Hello friends, welcome back. It's mid-May of 2022, and for today's project we're going to take this mess and turn it into a raised bed. Uh, we even have a mullen that decided to move in here into one of these planters. So the first step is I'm going to sort of move this um, everything off of this step. We have a concrete step and then it steps down to a little bit of a pad. So I'm going to build in basically where I'm outlining with my finger there. It's about a 7 by 6 um, box. We're going to take some scrap wood left over from some different projects and we'll turn this into a nice uh, pine planter that we can use in the same space. So the first step is to clear the area of course and so I don't know why these things have handles on them, the 100 gallon pegs, because those you try to move those fabric containers it just tears the container right in half. Uh, but there's our 7 feet and then it's about six feet, um, give or take, a couple inches different front to back there. So I'm leaving some space between the house and the planter to be able to get in from, from the back as well to harvest and to plant. So that's something to think about when you build a raised bed. Make sure you can reach all the parts of it uh, without getting inside of it. So one of the challenges is this is a little bit uneven because of the step. So I was playing around and I found out that a 2x4 laid down and a 2x4 stood up is just about right you know that's if you think about it like five inches so almost like a two by six but I don't have any again this is just stuff I have laying around pretty much um, so that does a pretty good job there of leveling it off um, one thing I'll mention too none of this is pressure treated this is all just um, regular old pine you can use pressure treated the new stuff for edibles but I just choose not to I don't know I, I know they say you can but I just don't like the idea of doing it um, so there's a little bit of gap there still, but we're going to also line this with landscape fabric so that'll stop any dirt from escaping through there. It's starting to come along pretty well, you know, it's just sort of roughed in, it's not put together yet. Um, doesn't look like much yet, but once we get the second level across the back, it'll, it'll um, clean up nicely. So here it is all framed in. One thing I'll mention, notice the supports in the middle and on the corners. So just take your cutoffs and use those. It came out nicely with the um, nicely even with the the concrete pad there, the concrete step. Um, but yeah, make sure that you put supports in your corners and also in the middle. And what that will do is keep the box from bowing out from the weight of the dirt inside or the soil or whatever you're putting in there. Um, so just use your scrap wood for that. Um, just put it roughly in the middle and in each corner. That'll give you plenty of strength. I also went in and I. Um, We'd whacked all of the grass that was in, in there that had sort of crept up onto um, the pad there. So next step, we cover the entire area in landscape fabric. That's going to keep weeds from coming in. Also keep the dirt inside where there's those little cracks between the boards. And you don't have to line the entire thing. I mean, you could, but there's no reason to. And then it just comes down to filling it, which is the most time-consuming and expensive part of building any raised bed is, is filling it with some kind of medium. Um, you could use, I would use, I think, a dump truck load of topsoil if I was starting fresh, but I happen to have many, many hundred gallon bins full of potting mix, so that's what I'm going to use in here. Um, potting mix is just a lot more expensive than any kind of topsoil or bed mix would be. So here it is, we're sort of, um, this is just my homemade mix I'm pouring in there from different containers um, that were in this area, so obviously that soil has to go somewhere, that potting soil. Um, it's not really like dirt, of course, or soil. It's more potting mix or medium. It's a peat moss base. And so, you know, normally you wouldn't do, again, such a large um, amount of that, but since I have it, use it. So the afternoon is spent <laughs> with a lot of shoveling. Um, at the 30 gallon bins you can just pick up and dump, but the 100 gallon bins you have to get them at least half empty first before you can really pick them up and sort of rustle them in there and dump them out. Um, they'll also tear you know, when you go to pick them up. So that's one of those one of the minuses about those fabric bins. They A lot of big pluses to them. I like them for a lot of things, but um, they're not really mobile. So they may have handles on them, but those I think are there just to fool you because there's no way that those are useful for moving those bins when they're full. So I got about two-thirds full, so now we're going to top it off. I've got a bunch of stay green potting mix and a bunch of miracle Grow, so I'm going to sort of put that in layers on top. And stay green is going to go sort of the deeper layer. Take a look. I'm kind of 
disappointed in the texture there. It's a, like wood chippy almost. And I've noticed that about a lot of the Stay Green products lately. Even what they sell as garden soil in that yellow bag is very like wood chip consistency. Um, look at it compared to in my right hand, my um, homemade mix. It's just very different. Um, it, it does work, so, but I just, I don't know. It's not the greatest texture. It just feels like, almost like, not exactly mulch, but almost like mulch. More so than like potting mix. But that's okay. It's going to work just fine here. Um, and it was cheap. And so that's, <laughs> when, when you're filling this amount. Now I could put topsoil on top of here, but that'd be kind of silly to put it on top of a bunch of potting mix. So I, I figure I've gone this far with the mix I had, I might as well just continue to fill. Um, as I said, you would never do this purposely. Like if you didn't have anything to fill this with, you would just go topsoil or raised bed mix and then amend it with some compost and you'd be, or just go 50-50 compost and topsoil, get it delivered. Um, it would be the easiest way and cheapest way to go. Probably cost you maybe 50 or $60 to do total um, versus four bags of potty mix is $60 and that wouldn't even, you know, scratch the surface. So here we are. I topped it off with miracle Grow, and I, I do think the miracle Grow is a much better texture than that Stay Green. So I, that's the one if I buy mix. I make a lot of my own potting mix, but if I ever buy it, I typically buy miracle Grow. I just think it's the better quality. Um, I haven't found one that I've liked the quality of that isn't miracle Grow. So even though it's kind of expensive, I just stick with it because it works. So now I'm just sort of leveling off the dirt, um, or the soil, I should say, not dirt, I guess. Um, and, and what we'll do is we'll plant our eggplants and peppers in here. That's what used to be in those 100-gallon bins and 30-gallon bins that were up here. And they grew really well. If you saw our videos from last year on eggplants, that was all in this area in um, containers. And so basically what I've done here is just make one giant wooden container. So anything's gonna, going to grow well in here. You know, you figure with two, t I think I may have said two by eights, but if I haven't, um, the large boards are two by eight pine, and then there's a two by four on the front to level it up with that um, stone slab there. And so basically, you know, a two by eight is only seven and a half inches, and so that's 15 inches in the shallow part, and then a two by four is only three and a half inches, so add another three and a half, so it's 18 and a half inches deep in the deepest part and 15 in the shallow part. So that's plenty for tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, anything like that. Um, it's probably deeper than most containers you would use for those things, and they'll be plenty happy in here. The one thing I wouldn't do is plant perennials in here because um, this will freeze solid being elevated, whereas in the ground it may not. If you watched our um, digging in the winter video, go check that out. Even in the middle of February, our ground here wasn't frozen, but something like this would be a giant ice cube in the winter. So here's the finished product. I think it looks really spiffy. It, it looks certainly clean this area up nice. It's um, got a nice sharp appearance. I may stain the outside of it. I'm not 100% sure on that. But again, it's just a really nice 42 square foot planter. I can reach all parts of it from the outside, which is something you want to think about when you're sizing and designing a planter so that you don't have to get inside of it to plant things or harvest. And here it is planted in. We've got 10 pepper plants, um, 4 Aji Kachucha, I think is how you say that. They're, I saw them for the first time in Baker Creek. And then 6 Habanada and 8 Eggplant of various varieties. We have Matoyo, Satsuma, Little Fingers, which I did videos on all those last year. And then we also have a new one called Frog Fingers, which was in Baker Creek, which looked really cool. So I can't wait to see how those come out. We'll definitely make some videos on them. But thank you for watching. I hope this video gave you some inspiration, maybe some ideas, hopefully some entertainment. And if you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, and we hope to see you again soon.